Hey friends, and welcome back to this video. You know, we were doing a two-part series that now has ended up being, this is the fourth part in it. We heard from you. We heard from you how this is making a difference and us being vulnerable and transparent and sharing about this disagreement that we had that just went south. But then how we walked through that to get healing for ourselves and we shared that. We shared the importance of being whole and complete that we need to fill up ourselves first. Right. And as you're listening to this, really put yourself in our shoes. You have your own circumstances, your own problems, things you're going with, things that's going on in your life that's different from ours. Really, there is something for you to get here in your own life, but it will take you looking, looking for it. Yeah. And maybe you haven't seen those first three episodes. You're going to want to go back and watch them. Yeah. because. And I was so surprised because we're having such a great time. Even if it goes bad, we're still a family. We still have time. Yeah. I agree. And I said, I just need a minute. I, I feel like you don't have patience with me so that I can work through this. I'm trying to work through this. It's ruining my fun here. I you know. guys arguing is ruining my fun already. I was having so much fun. Can I see you in the hallway? <laughs> and he was like, yes. We are in the hallway having discussions under our breath at a whisper while yeah. people are walking by us. He, oh. Heated fellowship. Heated fellowship. And guest walking by. Uh. Yeah, we were riding in the car and I could just sense this from you, this, this feeling still. And I just looked over at you and I was like, hey, are we good? Because I didn't want to think about it. I didn't even want to deal with it. I just wanted it to go away. Yeah, I just your facial features, your look, your body, your demeanor was you were disgusted with me. Yeah. That's where I was. I had such a hard time to take personal responsibility because it's easier to be a victim. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something how you're talking about these areas of life that my attraction level can go up and down? That's right. Did you know that there's four areas of your life that your spouse is either attracted to or unattracted to? Because this one, we're gonna kind of compare the difference of when the enemy strikes, when, an, when he throws a flaming arrow at you or at your marriage in the depletion stage and in the filled up stage and what they look like side by side so that you can see the importance of being whole and complete. You know, I know the more I have worked on myself and getting myself healthy, the more I'm aware of what the enemy's trying to do in my life. And so I'm able to like, <laughs> like yeah. block them, you right. know? I feel the same way too. And it's a really empowering state to be in, but it takes a lot of intentionality and it takes seeking freedom. Um, Those flaming arrows seem to pass through my shield when I am depleted. That's right. You know, when I'm physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, when those start going down, it, my shield of faith that I'm supposed to hold up, you know, it talks about in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, there's this one of the, one of the uh, weapons I have to defend against the e enemy is my faith. This shield of faith, and it talks about it's to keep those flaming arrows from hitting me. They, they, they just fall down. They do not fall down whenever I'm depleted. That's right. They land, and it has an impact on me, and then it has an impact on you and anybody around me. Right. And I just want to take you back to earlier in our marriage. Um, we were... It's like a time travel? Yes. <laughs> we were, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I was a workaholic, a perfectionist. Um, I was all about money and, you know, what can I get from this world? And what started to happen over time, I wasn't spiritually connected to the Lord. In fact, I was kind of running from him at that time. When I'm going at life at this kind of a pace, it is depleting. Where I heard this quote one time that if the devil can't make you sin, he'll make you hurry. Because he knows if he can make us just hurry through life, doing the next thing and going here important. and going there, he can deplete us. Yeah. 
And when we're depleted, when you are depleted, you are not your best self. Right? I am not my best self when I'm depleted. I, I was just asking myself this the other day and I asked the people that I coach, whenever someone says an action or words that they say that they regret. And you have done that. You've said things, you've done things. You're like, that's not my best self. The question is, if you were whole and complete in all areas of your life, would you have done something different during that time? And always the answer is yes. Yeah. Yes, I would have said and done something different if I wasn't depleted. Right. Listen for um, this. Okay, just go roll with me. I'm rolling. You ready? I'm roll. Rolling. Okay. <laughs> So I want to just show you a picture of Travis and I. No. I know, right? <laughs> oh, it's painful. Um, and you know, this was early on in our marriage. And um, I want to just show you the impact that this had on us. I mean, you can see in our, and you can see by looking at us that our lifestyle isn't working. <laughs> I mean, I look at us and I can just see how unhealthy we were. I didn't know then. there was four areas of my life to fill up, much less fill up. We were nor in survival did, a lot of the time. Nor did I believe that I deserve to do those things to fill right. myself up. Right. We're supposed to put everybody else first, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, it had an impact on our decision making. It had an impact on how we saw each other. Yeah. Our friend, Dr. Carl Benzio, has done a lot of study on decision making. And I've taken some of his videos, I've watched some of his videos, and I have learned that when I'm depleted, when I'm not taking good care of myself, I become a poor decision maker. Yeah. Yeah, we make decisions to lose our temper, to not communicate about things, to be impatient, to make poor financial decisions. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was making, when I'm depleted and when you're depleted, I was making poor decisions, how I acted and responded. Right. Uh, some of my addiction behaviors came out of that right. poor decision making. Right. Poor decision making. And depletion. Because when we're in a depletion, we're looking for things to fill us up. That's good. <laughs> so I need to buy more. I need to eat more. That didn't work. I need to party more. I need to drink more. None I need of it's to take working. More of those drugs. All of those things are not going to fill us up. However, there are four areas I that share we can another work one. on. I want to show and share another one. I think a lot of people think they get filled up by watching TV, going and laying on the couch and watching TV, and neither does that fill right. us up. Right. It's a more it, depleting state. Right. It's a way to escape yeah. life. Yeah. Um, but it is not going to fill you up. And however, there are four areas that we can fill up. And that's what we talked about in the last video. They're physical, emotional, mental, which is also brain health and spiritual. And when all four of those areas are filled up, wow, I am attractive because I am whole and complete. We've used this analogy that we're at a restaurant and you're with the restaurant with us and the waitress or waiter comes over to refill our water but she or he does it from an empty pitcher. We'd be like, what's, what's up with that? And we do that in life. We need to go pour out into other people because that's who Jesus called us to be and what to do. We need to go pour out and be Jesus to others. Mm -hmm. We can't do it when we're empty. We, we need to go back to the waitress station, which to, to us is, I need to go back to that vertical relationship with God. And I need to fill myself back up. I need to find ways in those four areas to fill myself back up so that I can go pour out into other people, so I can be present and pour out into you and to our daughter and to family. Right. Got to be able to do that. So important. Something I talked about in episode two was when we're depleted in those four areas of life, we start inwardly focusing inside. And that is that unhappiness that you, I'm sure you've met those people out in the world that are just absolutely unhappy with life. Miserable, yeah. miserable, misery. Yeah. I think it's because it's inwardly focused because I have seen myself go there so many times mm -hmm. where I am thinking about my pain or thinking about my circumstances or thinking about these thoughts that are incessant in my head. I can't believe she did that. Why it, did she say that? It, my thoughts make me miserable, miserable. And so do they, they make you too. We have 40 to 65,000 faults a day. Yeah. 
they yeah. make me miserable sometimes. You might be realizing that in your life, you're depleted. And I wanna just have you look that if the enemy is throwing a flaming arrow, whether it's circumstantial or relational, do you think that you would better be able to handle it if you were whole and complete? Hmm. Just think about that. I have an example of, Tell you us. know, the chocolate world argument that we talk about in episode all, of, one. all of episodes. Yeah, really, yeah that's right. Because that's what started it. And um, actually a week ago, sitting right here, I even have a little bit of footage I might show. Because, you know, when, when things strike and one of you hears the other person from judgment or like feeling not good enough or whatever it may be if you are not aware in that moment you fall into it and the difference is so at chocolate world we fell into it and we were so depleted we had no capacity to work through it this is important to get it's really important to get what adele's saying here so what we did instead was we handled it. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get clear. We didn't get resolution. And that was our first mistake. So yeah, we had no capacity to work through it because we were so depleted in life. I couldn't access right. anything at the time. And so then a week ago, we're sitting right here and... Um, About to film video number three or yes. episode number three. <laughs> yes. And, and a comment was said, and I took it the wrong way. I really felt like you were judging me. But what happened instead of me like falling into the pit and getting into this vortex with you and not knowing how to work through it, instead about, I don't know, three, four minutes into it, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Start. I'm going to get in my heart and really just feel what they're going to be feeling when they arrive to the course. Yeah. yeah. They're really hopeful, I imagine. They are a couple that they finally feel like they're going to get healing through us. Yeah, that could be <coughs> one group of people. Yeah. Why would you say that? Because... Wouldn't there be other group of people that are just so sure, in hurt and they, not hopeful and sure. yeah. they just can't wait to get something from us? Yes, I was just trying to paint a picture of who we were talking to as well. Yeah, I feel like now you are upset at what I was saying because I think it's intentional that what you were doing was getting into a space to talk. I would love for you just to add in what your thoughts were. Yeah, because I felt Starting like it, video. Wasn't, it wasn't loving. We're conclusive. We're, we're having a conversation about who it is we're talking to. It wasn't loving what I was saying? Well, that, that one comment just You don't felt, feel like it was loving? No, it, it felt like I did something wrong. Does that make sense? Just try to get in my shoes for a minute. If, if I said that comment to you, you would feel the same way. It raised a red flag for me of like, what just happened there? Do you mind stopping it and backing it up so we can rewatch that then? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What is even happening right now? We are sitting down to video about this very thing and it's happening. This is spiritual warfare. Right. It was just so clear. So I was like, I am going to go in the other room. We got really close to the edge of being triggered, but I had the awareness to be able to stop it. And that is the difference. <laughs> that is the difference when I am whole and complete and I am more filled up, which I'm still not all filled up. I think that's always a journey and it's a lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, I can get depleted just like that. And so can you. And so I have to constantly be looking and having awareness. Am I filled up? And when I am, I can see the attacks. And so I went in the other room and I was like, Lord, what is going on with me? This is ridiculous. And he was like, well, you felt rejected because you were expecting collaboration and support. And he offered something different. And so it, it pricked me and it made me feel misunderstood. And, and so as the Lord is showing me this, I'm like, okay, well, I repent of that. And you know, I definitely don't want pride in my life. So we're getting rid of that. And I don't know, five, eight minutes goes by and I come back and I'm like, 
Are you ready to have a conversation? We had a conversation. We were able to see each other's heart versus the words that were starting to feel right. attacking. And within the start of that to the finish of that was about 15 minutes and we were back on camera filming episode three. That right. is the difference of being depleted versus being filled up and why it is so important. Yeah, there's capacity, there's resiliency, there's an ability to not let the prefrontal cortex go offline That's right. as fast as it normally does. It's uh, there's access to be able to make better choices and decisions whenever you're more whole and complete. That's right. And I like what you said about you're not whole and complete. You're you're constantly there. You're constantly striving to be in awareness to get there because you're constantly being depleted all the time. Right. Because we we live in a world that's full of ways to deplete us. Right. There's stressors around that have the ability to deplete us all the time. Right. And if you're a parent, that's one of them right there. And it is a big stressor in our lives. It's a big depleter because we are constantly pouring into our children. They really, they need that. And so I have to be aware of how is this depleting me and how can I fill myself up on the other end? So why is it important for us to get clear between each other? It's important so that we can walk in the light. In 1 John 1, 7, it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son purifies us from all sin. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm, hands say down. Something. If you're not walking in the light, you're walking in the darkness. And that's where evil is. Right. That's where all sorts of evil is. And of course, that's where these arguments are coming from. Exactly. But you're talking about walking in the light and that is letting go of all of that, all the lies of the enemy. That's right. So that you can be with the truths of God. Right. And have fellowship with each right. other. Like we're meant to be. I mean, once the veil is gone between us and the enemy is no longer there. We're connected. We are super connected there's cool intimacy <laughs> there's intimacy there there's passion and love and connection and all the things are there right when and we're fully being, accessible yes when we're being whole and complete and it's up to me to show up that way because if only one spouse is showing up whole and complete and the other one is not taking responsibility it doesn't work both spouses have to show up so that we can share this beautiful space called marriage together. But I am responsible for me and my well-being and how attractive I am to my spouse. Yeah, when you're being that way, it is attractive. You know, when those, It those, is those... sexy, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I told you that this morning. Yeah. It is super sexy to see my man work on keeping himself filled up, especially, especially spiritually. When I see him humbling himself before the Lord, there's nothing else that is hotter mm. and more attractive to me. Wow. The other things are Thanks. a bonus. So what are we really saying here? We're saying that it is up to me. It's up to you to take personal responsibility. No one else is going to do it. No one else is gonna take no. care of me like I can do, per physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, to fill myself up. It's up to you. Personal responsibility to go take care of yourself. It's not a selfish thing to take good care of yourself. Now, there is some selfish things you can do in that, and that, that's not what I would want you to, to hear us saying. There are some things you could do to be selfish, but that's not what we're saying. Take good care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Fill yourself up so that you can be who it is God called you to be. Be a light to others. Be a light to others and create those relationships. Yeah, and I just want to speak to the spouse that is trying to get your spouse to be better, to change, to fix them. And I just want to encourage you to stop. Stop doing that because it's not gonna work. You work on you. Yeah. You get healthy in all four areas of your life and watch your life change around you. I promise you, your life will change. That's good, that's good. Your spouse can't help but to be influenced by your choices to take good care of yourself. 
You're an inspiration. And be your best self. Yeah. You are an inspiration to me. When I see you taking good care of yourself, it inspires me. But when I see you taking good care of yourself and then I feel judgment from you about my care, I don't want anything to do with it and I push myself away. Yeah. So I love what you said there that as you're going about your life, take great, great personal responsibility and yeah. care for yourself and then be a great influence on your spouse. Yeah. And if all of these things that we mentioned in this episode today, if you are like, I want to know more about that, guess what? We have a program that is designed just for you. It's called Becoming Whole and Complete. Imagine that. Because it has all the different steps that we need that you have actually heard us talk about over this little mini series. You learn foundational steps in your life that point you in the direction of becoming more whole and complete. And so we'll put that link in the description below. Go check it out. See if it's right for you. It will change your life. Yeah. Oh, and I have a, <laughs> that's not how I want to do that. <laughs> Hey! Yeah! Oh, something I want to share. Speaking of the whole and complete course, one of you in our audience purchased the course and this is what you had to say about it. I really appreciate these comments. Yes. It helps us know that you're really getting value out of this course. It's changed our lives. Yes. So we know it works, but it's even more rewarding to see it work in other people's lives. She says, this exercise was so freeing for me. I can't even put into words or explain why it works when I try to share it with my spouse. All I know is my heart feels lighter. It's no longer blocking the joy and gratitude that I now get to experience by becoming aware of my biggest thorn. Thank you for all you do. Mm. Oh, that just blessed our hearts so much to know that you got the healing from this course. And so thank you so much for that comment. Yeah, that's what Jesus would want you to have is to be able to live your life to the full. Which is joy and gratitude. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So exciting. Yeah, thank you guys. If you haven't already heard about our Rebuilding Marriage chapter by chapter, you're going to want to listen to the next portion and make sure and stick around because there's some really great bloopers at the end. We are excited to introduce to you our online community called Rebuilding Marriage Chapter by Chapter. It's designed to help you heal from betrayal and rebuild your marriage. We will be offering a wealth of resources, advice, workshops, personal stories, exercises, and so much more. This is in a private setting where you can connect with other couples who understand exactly what you're going through. We believe that healing and rebuilding marriage incrementally is much like turning the pages of a book. So we wanted to create a unique opportunity for a transformative journey, chapter by chapter, as we write our book. Our desire is to help each couple rebuild trust, nurture emotional connection, and cultivate a much stronger foundation in your marriage. We want to support you every step of the way in your healing. And as we write this book, we will be using this community as a test audience for the content that will be in this book. We will be sharing the exercises, journaling topics, and other activities that we have found really helpful in our own healing journey. We want to make sure that the book the Lord has called us to write is as helpful as possible for couples who are struggling to rebuild their marriage after betrayal. And we believe that as we go through this content, it will help you heal in a God-honoring way, surrounded by other couples all doing the work to have lasting healing. So we would love for you to join our community today and be a part of this transformative journey in your own marriage. So you can click the link below in the description to find out more. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. What can I get from this world? Where am I going with this? Oh, and I'm really quick. Will you just go back and say this one phrase in this episode instead of in this video? In this episode. Wait, a, wait for me to get situated now. In this episode. In this episode. In this episode, in this episode, we will be awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I'll I splice didn't give you those any together. Problems. Thanks. Yeah. It's it. my editing mind. It's editing while we're having this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a little bit of vid video, and I have a little bit of um, what is it? Filmage. 
filmage. Um, when we're depleted and where was I going with that? So but what was I saying? You don't remember. I don't Great. And this is going to bother people online. It needs to be lined up properly. Thanks. We'll get messages. <laughs> Your cups are crooked. Uh. Bye. That's a wrap. Good job. <laughs> yep. You are sexy though. Oh, thank you. <laughs>